today's session, we will cover SonarLint and on how to use it within the Eclipse IDE. We'll cover the installation aspect as well as the coding experience and also the advantages of connected mode and on how to set it up within Eclipse. Additionally, you can actually go on to docs.sonarsource.com where you'll be able to find documentation for SonarLint as well as SonarLint for our other IDE families for any aspects that are not covered within this video itself. Installing SonarLint is quite simple. Head over to Help and then Eclipse Marketplace. And then after that, a pop-up should appear. Search for Sonar Lint in the search box. And after that, hit the Install button once you find Sonar Lint. The installation should proceed. And once you press Finish, Eclipse will prompt to restart the IDE. And once the IDE is restarted, you can head over to Settings and you'll see that when you search Sonar Lint in the settings, you'll be able to see it right over there. You can start immediately opening files within your project to find issues. So we are able to see issues in line as well as also in the problems pane. You might prefer to see issues for only one file at a time. And to do this, you can head over to Window, Show View, Other, and then open up all of the Sonar Lint related panes. And from here, you can see that you do also see the issues in the Sonar Lint on the fly pane as opposed to the problems. And you realize that, let's say I open File Server, you realize that over here you have 17 items. But when I close these two, you'll still see 17 items. Whereas on the Sonar Lint on the fly tab, if you were to click on it, you realize that you know uh, it shows only the items for the file that's open, which I feel is less cluttered than the problems pane. All right, when it comes to finding and fixing issues, we'll use fileservlet.java as an example. So over here, you can see that there is a util.delete file method. And this is an issue actually. So let's open up the rules description to see why it's an issue. And you can see that exceptions should not be thrown from servlet methods, which is what's happening. This method actually throws an exception if it's not handled. And how can I fix it? You can see over here that we are supposed to surround it with a try catch block. And um, there is a non compliant and compliant solution. So I'll just copy and paste the try catch block over here. And I will move the utils.delete file method into the try catch block. As a good practice, I've also handled the exception over here. And you realize that after the issue has been resolved, it will disappear from the sonar lint on the fly pane below. All right, now we'll look at activating or deactivating rules in sonar lint. Head over to Eclipse and then Settings. And from here, you're able to see the sonar lint activated or deactivated rules by heading to sonar lint and then rules configuration. And this is where you're able to tick or untick the boxes to activate or deactivate certain rules, right? And then apply and close to apply these rules and uh, overall settings to your Sonar Lint. This then allows those rules that you've disabled or enabled to then be applied uh, globally to whichever project that you're on. There is a better way to do this, and this is to actually bind your Sonar Lint to your Sonar Cube or Sonar Cloud. And to do this, you actually have to go into the project that you want to bind and hit Sonar Lint and bind to Sonar Cube or Sonar Cloud. There's an option over here. All right? You can also go over here onto the panel that we opened earlier, the Sonar Lint bindings, and you can press the same button over here, connect to Sonar Cube or Sonar Cloud to do the same thing. And what this does is that it connects your local project and it binds it to the project that has been scanned on Sonar Cube or Sonar Cloud and it runs it in connected mode. With connected mode, you're able to sync the quality profiles, which is the set of activated or deactivated rules over from Sonar Cube to the project that you bound on your ID over here. And the rules that you activated or deactivated will be synced. So as covered earlier, you can use this pane to connect to Sonar Cube or Sonar Cloud. And just a recap on how to get this uh, view, right, is to go to window, show view, other, and then the Sonar Lint binding pane is over here. Right. So once it's here, you can click on that and you can connect to Sonar Cube or Sonar Cloud. Press next. Right. So enter your URL in, uh, press next. And I would prefer to use the token over the username and password method, but you can use either. Right. And once you hit next, you then press on the generate token button, which then pops open your browser window where, I mean, if you're already logged in into Sonar Cube, uh, let me drag it over so I can show, to show you all. You can see over here I'm already logged in and this pane allows you to allow connection. So click on allow connection and it redirects you back to your Eclipse IDE that then allows you to connect it together. 
Alright, and you will also be able to receive notifications if you enable this option, which will be the quality gate status of a project bound when it changes, or the latest analysis of a bound project on Sonar Cube if there are raised new issues assigned to you. Right? So you press next and then press finish. There you go, you are done connecting Sonar Cube to Sonar Lint. And to connect your Sonar Lint local project to the project on Sonar Cube, you then need to bind it. So over here, it will pop up a notification if your project is already found on Sonar Cube, and you can press the bind button in the corner, and your local project, which has been detected by Sonar Lint, gets bound to the project on Sonar Cube. All right, so you have noticed that I've rearranged the panes over here for easier viewing, and I have also binded the project to my project on my Sonar Cube instance. So all of my issues that get raised over here are adherent to the quality profile which I've assigned to the project on Sonar Cube. Right. Apart from that, you'll also be able to see the taint vulnerabilities and this can be done by opening one of the files and you've noticed that now you'll be able to see this taint analysis vulnerabilities which essentially are vulnerabilities that apply to multiple code locations that may span across multiple files. So if you can see on my screen, you can see that through the source, uh, data flows in through the number one over here, gets propagated to two, three, and then across to a different file, four, five, six, seven, right? And you also can take a look at how you can you can fix it over here. Like why is an issue, and there's the this other how I can fix it tab where we provide info for multiple frameworks. Also, if you're working with a different framework, as well as more info where you can access resources related to this particular rule that has been triggered on the issue. Yep. So additionally, if I want to, I can also right click and I can open this issue in the browser. Allow me to drag it over. With this, you're able to change the issue status, reassign it to a teammate, or even add a comment over here to collaborate with your teammates on Sonar Cube. Apart from that, there are a few additional things you can do over here. You can actually right click and you can mark issue as. And what this does is that it's actually able to allow you to change the status of the issue to accept it, you know, which means that the issue is valid but will not be fixed now and it's represented as an accepted technical debt. You can mark it as a false positive and for whichever option you choose, this issue status will then get synced up to your online Sonar Cube instance. And very lastly, we have the quick fix feature over here and what this does is that it's able to apply a quick fix onto your code. As you can see over here, I'm applying the fix to line 20 and after applying the fix, you can see that the issue disappeared in the bottom pane. But if I were to undo the change and save it again, you notice that in the bottom pane, the issue reappears again. So to do a semi recap of connected mode advantages, which includes synchronization of other details about issues. So not only finding issues that were previously discovered by Sonar Cube or say Sonar Cloud, but also the suppression of any issues that you've previously marked as a false positive or a won't fixed for some other reason will also synchronize. So if you've already worked with your project teams to deactivate some rules or activate additional rules, or say if you change rule configurations, uh, those are called your quality profiles, within your Sonar settings, those will be synchronized too to your IDE. More than that, you get the ability to analyze more languages, so all of your languages that are included in your Sonar commercial subscription will also be synchronized if you have one. Those will be unlocked in the IDE as long as your IDE supports that language. As previously mentioned, you'll even receive notifications of key events in the lifecycle of your project, such as the changing of a quality gate status, for example, on your main branch. For more information about Sonar Lint, as well as to stay synchronized with our latest features, you can also find us at sonarsource.com slash product slash Sonar Lint.